Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Green Tech Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. I'm Becky Worley, and this is the Twit Network's Top 25 Green Tech Innovator Series. This episode of Green Tech Today is brought to you by the Eco Imagination Challenge from GE. GE and its partners are awarding $200 million to ideas that help build the next generation power grid for the 21st century. For more information and to view and comment on ideas, go to ecoimagination.com slash challenge. Green Tech Today also brought to you by Carbonite. Backing up the files on your PC or Mac is safe and easy with Carbonite. For a free trial plus two free months with purchase, go to Carbonite.com, offer code GREENTECH. And also by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off the lifetime of your account, go to Squarespace.com and use offer code GREENTECH. When looking for examples of advanced energy systems integration, one naturally turns to a brewery. Ken Grossman is the CEO of Sierra Nevada Brewery, and uh, you take alternative energy and being carbon neutral seriously. We do. We've been doing lots of things over the years. We've got fuel cells and lots of solar power and heat exchangers all over the place to, to save energy. So we've got a, a lot of things throughout the brewery that uh, uh, is here to help us make beer as well as save power and energy. Are you doing this to do the right thing, to save money or to get reporters and, and uh, TV cameras here for the PR? Well, we uh, certainly started doing it because we felt it was the right thing to do as a manufacturer. We use a lot of resources. We use water and electricity and gas, and so we really felt that it was our duty to, to be good stewards and try to figure out how to make beer with uh, the least amount of energy inputs. We, ha we have this concept that we've been thinking about that, you know, people who are in business, they want to do good, but they're finding out with alternative energy that they can do very well. Has it been good for the bottom line? Um, I would say it's been okay for the bottom line. Uh, most of the projects have uh, have a payback. Some of them are, are a bit longer than most businesses, I think, would like to, to see when they're looking at a capital project. But uh, uh, some of ours uh, uh, do have a return, and, and we're in it for the long haul. So uh, getting a quick return isn't really what drives uh, drives us to do a lot of these projects. Well, they tell me that as, you know, as soon as we do the tour and then end the tour, and then I get to drink a beer. That's so right. can, can we start? Uh, start with a beer or start with a tour? <laughs> That's an option? Yeah. Don't tell me that, I'm Irish. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you just lead me on and show me what you got? I will. Let's go. Great. Wow. So th this is the brew house. Big and, and uh, shiny. Yep. Big, nice big copper kettles. Um, we actually, th this is a place where we do start some of the heat recovery projects. So above us is a large heat exchanger called a vapor condenser. And the steam that normally goes up the stacks when you boil beer, uh, we recover a lot of that heat. Um, so what's being boiled in here? Um, the, the extract from malted barley, which is what we use as our, our brewing source for, for the sugars that make beer. Uh, and we're a, a natural brewer. We use 100% malted barley. We use whole cone hops. We don't use any extracts or, or uh, shortcuts in our brewing process. Mm -hmm. um, but a part of the brewing process is boiling the beer. And that takes a bit of energy. And the energy, we can recapture most of it as it travels up the stack, uh, condense the steam, uh, recover the heat, and that hot water, uh, heat is then used to heat water, which allows us to do all of our cleaning cycles. So we get sort of a, a free recovery of the heat that normally went up a stack. So this kind of technology was uh, in, in Europe probably in the last uh, 20 or 30 years, but since our energy costs in the U.S. have been so much less, there's been less of a of initiative to, to put that in breweries over here. So we put in, I think, one of the first vapor condensers that certainly had a small brewery uh, in the United States in order to capture some of that waste heat. What gets boiled in here? Can you show me? There was somebody um, who opened that up. Yeah, I can't there? open the door because it's boiling right now, but um, what's in there is, uh, is malted barley, and malted barley is uh, uh, a grain, and we've extracted the sugar, and then these are hops, and so... Uh, you know these, what? Yeah, this people, smells like beer. Um, this is where the aroma and a lot of the bitterness comes from in beer. It's from the hops. It's a, a natural plant. We've got some growing outside. And um, 
These are hop cones, and this is where most of the aromatic oils and the bitter resins are located, are in these hop cones. What are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at uh, one of our fuel cells, and we've got four 300 kilowatt uh, direct fuel cells. So uh, these have the ability to uh, take hydrogen out of either biogas or natural gas, mix it with oxygen, and produce electricity. Um, What's the mix there in terms of biogas to natural gas? Uh, it, it depends on, on how much biogas we're producing, and we use the biogas also in our boilers, and we'll talk about that. Uh, so we can blend it in here, probably up to 25% of the, uh, the gas that's supplied. But Now, natural gas is less expensive than some of the other fuels, but that's the problem with fuel cells, right? We don't have the perfect fuel for it yet. Correct. I mean, biogas is a great, uh, great fuel because it can, can be produced from waste products. Uh, we're producing it from our waste stream of our brewing water. So we actually take our wastewater, treat it in an anaerobic digester, and produce methane, which then we can use as an energy source to boil our beer or produce electricity like in a fuel cell. So in this case, methane is a good guy. Correct. Yeah, as long as you combust it and get energy out of it, if it just gets banded into the atmosphere, it's a bad bad actor, so. We're going to take a quick break from Green Tech to thank one of our sponsors, Carbonite. Backing up files on your PC or your Mac, it's safe, it's easy with Carbonite. So for a free trial plus two free months with purchase, go to Carbonite.com, use the offer code GREENTECH. And the thing about Carbonite is, I like to say it's like an infomercial product. You know, they always say set it and forget it. You sign up for Carbonite, you get it going on your computer, and it does the heavy lifting for you. All your important files, your photos, your videos, they're all saved off-site. It's Carbonite.com. Use the offer code GREENTECH, and we thank them for their sponsorship. There are over 10,000 solar panels here at the brewery, covering almost every inch of roof space. And over the parking lot, these special panels that track the sun for maximum efficiency. So these are our fuel cells over here, okay. and this walkway goes on up to uh, look at some of our solar collectors. Cool. The largest privately owned installation in the U.S. as far as we know. Wow. Uh, all the roofs are covered, and then we'll see the parking lot structure, which is a, a tracking array where it follows the sun throughout the day. All these panels up here are, are fixed in place, right? Uh, but it provides, uh, say, with, with our fuel cells, uh, between 80 and 90 percent of our electrical needs uh, are generated here on site. Huh. What's the uh, return time on the uh, solar panels? Do you well, think? all different times. Uh, we we uh, had some subsidies from the state and feds in the beginning of the project, and we used all those up. So the last few projects we've paid for without any um, mm -hmm. uh, credits from uh, California. Payback there is ranging up to 14 years. Huh. Um, but now with the sort of slowdown in the economy and the surplus of manufacturing capacity in solar, the cost of solar installations, even without subsidies, are down in the seven, eight year range now. Huh. Like every company, Sierra Nevada tracks its resources carefully. Like how much water does it take to make a barrel of beer? Or how much energy? But what's really interesting to us is how much energy they're actually producing right here on site. They've been as high as producing 96% of their energy needs. They lost a couple of fuel cells this summer, but they're working their way back up towards the company goal of producing 85% of their own energy right here on site. I want to take a quick break from this episode of Green Tech Today to thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace.com. Now, let me tell you about this. This is the fast, easy way to publish a website or a blog. And what's unique about Squarespace is that it's really easy to use. It's scalable. It's optimized for both beginners and then you have the controls necessary if you're a CSS expert and you really want to tweak your site. It's all there. They've got design templates like you wouldn't believe. You've got modules to build your blog, your forum, forms, Flickr photo displays, there's a Twitter widget. There's also an iPhone app so you can log into your website and update it on the go. So if you want to try out Squarespace, 
Here's what you do. You sign up for a free account. Just go to squarespace.com. You don't need to put a credit card down. Just try it out to build your website. Now, if you decide to purchase it, use the offer code GREENTECH and get 10% off the lifetime of your new account. It's squarespace.com using the offer code GREENTECH. We're partnering with uh, four of the, the biggest uh, venture capital firms in the clean energy space, three in the U.S., one in Europe. Uh, you know, again, we think that the combination of GE investment and venture capital investment is going to allow us to increase innovation. It's going to allow us to accelerate new ideas. It puts us shoulder to shoulder with some of the smartest tech investors. And we can use the, what I would call the industrial clout of GE to bring technologies to this marketplace faster. GE announced its challenge at a San Francisco event along with its four venture capital partners. Emerald Technology Ventures, Foundation Capital, Kleiner Perkins Caulfield & Byers, and Rockport Capital Partners have all joined with GE. Ideas from companies and individuals can be entered through the Ecoimagination.com website for the next 10 weeks. So check out Ecoimagination.com. Sherry Chastain is the brewery's environmental sustainability coordinator. We have a program or a project that touches every part of our operation. Uh, every single part of our operation has some sort of environmental efficiency component to it, whether it's the offices or the restaurant, production, packaging, transportation. Every department at Sierra Nevada is working very hard to reduce their environmental impacts whether it's through on-site self-generation uh, for electricity or recycling or water conservation. Um, there's a program and a project for every department. Sherry gives me the rest of the Sierra tour. So what about this truck? So this truck here is a route truck. It services our accounts locally in Chico. Uh, it's, it, we act as our own distributor here in Chico, but this truck is a special truck. It's a hybrid truck. Okay. So it's a diesel electric, similar to a Prius, only it runs on diesel except ga instead of gasoline. Um, it's much better in city settings where yeah. you know, you've got a lot of stop and go, a lot of idle time, that kind of thing. So we haven't had it long enough. Um, we are the first company to actually purchase one of these, though. So it's a Peterbilt truck. So we haven't had it long enough to really get a good sense on how much more efficient it is, but it certainly is is more efficient than a traditional vehicle. So say that again, you haven't had it? We haven't had it long enough to really get a good sense on how much more efficient it is over a traditional truck, but we know it is more efficient. Got it. Very cool. Hybrid trucks. Yeah. I like them. This is our wastewater treatment facility. We're treating brewing process water. Uh, we're digesting some of the organic compounds that are in that water. Part of that digestion is an anaerobic digester. The little critters inside the anaerobic digester are releasing methane as part of the digestion process. We can recover that methane, run it through the cleaning and compression system, utilize that as a fuel source in our boilers to offset natural gas consumption. So this is biogas? Correct. You've got wastewater, it's being treated, it produces methane, and you Pipe that out and use it as fuel. Yes. All right. Biogas. Check. I asked Sherry if she knows what their carbon footprint is. Succinctly as you can, what's going on with the carbon dioxide? Our fermentation process, uh, CO2 is a natural byproduct of the fermentation process. Instead of venting the CO2 to atmosphere, we have a system set up to recover the CO2. We can clean it up, compress it, store it in these white tanks behind me, and then utilize that throughout the plant. What do you use it for? So we use CO2 for sanit sanitizing, for pressurizing tanks and pipes, but CO2 is also utilized in our packaging department. Um, isn't beer fizzy because of CO2? I mean, isn't there CO2 in the beer you bottle? It's carbonated. Yeah, exactly. Just like a soda or, or any carbonated beverage. But some comes out. It does, every time you crack it. But why does it come out in the process? Like, I mean, what I'm trying to get at is, you know, I would think that the CO2 is either in the liquid or... Or it's not. <laughs> During the fermentation process, the yeast produce a lot of CO2. Um, that CO2 cannot stay in that tank, otherwise the tank will become too pressurized, the yeast will stop working, and then you don't have beer. So we've got to remove that CO2 during that process. I think my favorite environmental aspect of the Sierra Nevada Brewery is how they take their visitors on the tour. They call it a bike bar. So maybe 
Maybe the best way to fight global warming is to pour yourself a cold one. Mmm. Cheers. That's it for this episode of Green Tech Today. If you have any comments on the show, please email us. We're Green Tech Today at twit.tv. You can also leave us a voicemail. Thanks for watching. I'm Becky Worley.